And uh, as you saw, Vampir is really powerful, uh, but it would be uh, really difficult to find something else if it's uh, something like this inside uh, this uh, like origin. It's like this. Uh, and you have to find this particular pattern. And if you have a million of threads and a very uh, huge uh, execution time, it would be almost impossible to find anything. Like, might be, like I speak for myself, for me it would be really <laughs> difficult. Um, for this, uh, there is a, another uh, tool, it's called Skalaska Trace uh, uh, Based. Tool. Uh, it's a performance analysis tool set for the uh, most popular pa uh, parallel uh, programming paradigm. It's uh, open source. Uh, it uh, supports MPI, OpenMP, uh, uh, POS to some extent POSIX threads. It doesn't support uh, any GPUs um, uh, related events or memory related events. Like you can uh, collect a lot of events within the tracing and show it in Vampir, but not all of them can be analyzed with the uh, uh, Skalaska. Skalaska is more uh, for communication patterns, uh, inefficiency identification. And it's uh, uh, targeted uh, for large scale parallel application. It was uh, uh, demonstrated to scale up to 1.8 million parallel threads. Uh, and of course, it works with a smaller scale. Uh, what is the uh, general idea? Uh, you have a low level event traces uh, here. Like uh, we first collected them uh, with a Scorpi. We have a huge amount of traces, uh, but we would like to automate the search. Uh, so we predefined some patterns, some inefficiency patterns, and Skalaska would uh, automatically search the traces for these particular inefficiency patterns. What are the uh, what are the typical inefficiency patterns? In a second. Uh, so basically, Skalaska analyzes these low-level event traces automatically after your job has uh, completed uh, and collected all the traces. It automatically will test it and create additional report which would be visible in Cube. Uh, Here is a very typical example of uh, late sender, late state. So uh, here we have a, a time, uh, and here we have a processes. But let's say process zero here, process one is here. So process uh, zero uh, have a one MPI sent, uh, and on uh, process one we have MPI received, which was posted a little bit earlier than the uh, MPI sent. So and basically this time is considered to be waiting time. It might be because uh, the load uh, on the process zero uh, is bigger than on process one. One of the reasons, yeah. Um, this is what can be detected by uh, uh, Skalaska. But you might say, okay, but I don't have point-to-point -point, uh, 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 blocking. This is blocking. I am not sure you are familiar with uh, MPI, blocking versus not blocking. All of, or some of you? Okay, so, some of you are aware. So, uh, and if you say, okay, I don't have blocking communication, I have non-blocking, but I don't care about this. But it is also valid for non-blocking. There are many, many other patterns. Uh, if you have uh, MPI weight or all weight and so on, like it's uh, like many, many other patterns which can be detected by Skalaska. Uh, it is all. Uh, it is still possible to have a weight stay like this particular late st late sender pattern. Uh, and there are many, many other patterns like let broadcast, let, let uh, com uh, late complete, and so on, depending on the what what you use, uh, which uh, uh, typical um, communication pattern you use. Uh, it's also possible to detect for OpenMP uh, and for MPI, and uh, for some extent, I already said for some POSIX. I, I'm not sure how many of you are using POSIX threads. Anyone? Okay, two. Okay. He is limited, uh, 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 support is limited. For GPUs, there is no support, uh, but the, like the, there is a current work on this, but at the moment, no support, uh, and uh, no support for any memory uh, uh, collections. Uh, another uh, a very interesting uh, feature of Skalaska is to identify the critical path. Do you know what is a critical path? Do you use it in your work? Because a critical path is very uh, known terminology. It's used also in project management, in whatever. So, okay, then uh, I'll uh, explain a little bit more in detail. So, 
Uh, here we have uh, uh, our three functions, and you can see the, uh, how they communicate. Oops. Uh, and here you can already see we have uh, two late senders, right? Did you notice late senders from the previous slide? Uh, Skalaska first uh, uh, detects in the first run, is a it's called also forward run. Uh, it detects uh, wait states. So here we have a, a late, late sender, and here we have a late sender, and also we have some imbalance here. Uh, Skalaska also identifies. So basically, at the uh, end of um, MPI application, we have an MPI finalize, and uh, all the uh, processes are reaching this point at the different uh, state. It means uh, that. Uh, um, uh, we have potentially some imbalance. So some processes are fa uh, running fast and some are ra running uh, much slower. And then uh, Skalaska does a, a backwards analysis. So uh, Skalaska basically uh, uh, tries to uh, uh, analyze your application backwards. Uh, strands, uh, st uh, starts from the slowest one, so from the, from the full bar, because it's completed the last. Uh, and then it goes uh, backwards. Uh, and identifies that there is a communication and goes back uh, to so, so basically identifies that here is a late sender, goes back and then um, identifies here again there is another communication and goes back here and identifies this path. So what was caused this, all these wait states and what is the responsible for this, um, uh, uh, the, for this such slow uh, uh, runtime. This is called a uh, um, critical path, where you spend most of, the, of your uh, computation time. Why I say it's uh, applicable to everyone? Because like, you can see the critical path of the particular project. You can see the, your critical path of your uh, PhD uh, path. Um, uh, and basically, critical paths uh, show uh, 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 where application spends most of the of, of, of the of the time and where you should uh, uh, look into to optimize your application. So it basically hints you, please look into these particular functions. Uh, if you want to optimize the runtime, please look on this. Don't optimize something else. And another uh, Feature of uh, uh, Sk uh, Skalaska is to uh, is a root cause analysis. It uh, uh, allows you to identify uh, what was the cause of all these inefficiencies. For example, in this uh, uh, example, uh, we can see uh, two wait states. Uh, so this is uh, they are like kind of cascade uh, of late senders, uh, and you can see um, uh, late sender here, late senders here. And uh, here was a direct weight, uh, and uh, here uh, is was uh, in indirect weight because cost of the, uh, of the weight uh, here. And it somehow can be mapped uh, uh, direct and indirect, uh, and identify the delays like like this and this. Like if you improve here and here, uh, your application will be uh, faster and better. So Skalaska can, so basically uh, what Skalaska can uh, say you, okay, please the, uh, look into this full function because it runs too long. And if you want to uh, optimize your uh, uh, big amount of late senders, you have to optimize these full functions. Okay. Uh, Yes, this is already mentioned. It's uh, um, open source and it supports also OTF2 traces and uh, cube4 formats. So basically everything from the uh, from the very beginning from the Scorpio infrastructure. Uh, and there are some uh, uh, limitations. It doesn't support uh, GPUs. Uh, uh, it, at the moment, it's only support MPI thread funneled level. And uh, if there are some puppy uh, uh, counters collected with the traces, uh, they will be also ignored by Skalaska. Let's put all this together in a big picture, uh, and then uh, we we'll can summarize and finally start with the hands-on. Uh, so basically, we have our source code. Uh, we instrument it uh, and compile it uh, uh, with a particular 
wrapper, then we have an instrumented executable. Then uh, we uh, apply it to a Scorpio measurement uh, system, and then we collect the measurements and get, uh, get a, a result as a cube four, in a cube four format. Uh, if we uh, if it is if we see that our overhead of uh, of the measurement is too low, then we co can optimize it. How to do it? Uh, I will explain a little bit later. Uh, and then uh, after we can visualize this re uh, re result from the Scorpi in the Cube browser. If we collect traces, uh, we can also analyze this uh, uh, with a uh, Skalaska and generate a report which would be visible in the cube. Uh, now you can see the uh, uh, yellow part. This is related to Scorpi. There is this pinkish uh, side is related to cube. Uh, this uh, dark yellow rectangle is related to vampire. And even more dark yellow is a uh, uh, Skalaska. Uh, all is related to the Skalaska workflow. Uh, Skalaska also provides some convenience tools uh, to, uh, 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 to post-process data collected uh, with uh, Skalaska to create additional hierarchy. So uh, this is, that's why it's uh, uh, marked as a dashed line. But no worries, so at the moment, uh, maybe it uh, sounds very confusing and it's a lot of information, but we will try to uh, do a hands-on and uh, get familiar with all these tools. So now, please uh, go to the, uh, this website. Uh, this is capital, this is important. Uh, so go.fzj.de uh, uh, and then uh, capital I, HPCSS24. You can, of course, uh, open it uh, with your phone, but then it will be difficult to follow. Open it with, uh, like, I don't know why I put <laughs> Just in case, just you can bookmark it for later. Uh, let me open it as well. Uh, you should see something like this. <laughs> yes? Okay. Before we start with hands-on, I would like to do some uh, advertisement. Um, so if you scroll down, you'll see some uh, links about tools. Yes? Uh, you can uh, download them, you can read documentation about them. Uh, but this is uh, useful links. Uh, the, the first one, it was a video which you're supposed to watch uh, for later. Uh, we are HPS uh, tuning workshops. There is a, a, a virtual organization which provides uh, tuning workshops uh, and uh, helps uh, uh, users to um, analyze their application. So basically, uh, tools developers and users are come together and analyze the application together. So if you are interested uh, in your uh, and applying some tools, uh, different tools uh, to your application, you might would like to uh, to go to this website uh, and and subscribe for, for one of these uh, workshops. Another via HPS uh, tools guide. I already explained that there are so many, so many tools available. You don't know what to use. Uh, this is uh, one PDF which might uh, be useful for you to identify which tool to use. Uh, there is also an, uh, one project, it's a Center of Excellence, uh, POP, Performance uh, Optimization Productivity Project. And uh, let me click. So basically, this uh, uh, project allows you uh, uh, to apply for a service. Uh, and in this service, uh, you'll get analysis of your application for free. So uh, experts uh, of tools, uh, tool developers, will look into your application and say, okay, this is uh, your application is running bad or running good. Uh, and the um, advantage of this um, 
uh, of this center of excellence that you'll get some metrics. Uh, and the, it's a hierarchy of metrics and they say, okay, uh, uh, the load balance is bad, communication is bad, uh, uh, you have problem with serialization or network. Uh, uh, if you want to apply for, uh, this is uh, limitations. Uh, it is only available for applications uh, uh, for users affiliated with the uh, European Union. Uh, or if you have some collaborators from Europe, you can always apply for this. Uh, another uh, limitation, uh, your application should be scalable. Like it should run mo more than on single CPU. And third uh, limitation, it should run at all. Like they don't debug for you. Yeah. Uh, how to apply for this? Um, you should see a request service form, yes. Here you can, you can fill it in, a request what you are interested in. I'm interested in a, a communication patterns analysis and, and so on. And uh, then experts uh, will do an analysis for you. From, uh, requirement for, from you, uh, fill this form and collaborate because they cannot do anything without your help. So you, you need to collaborate. Okay. Uh, this is regarding POP. Uh, another project uh, which I would like to uh, mention, it is EPIQ project. Um, let me open this web page. Uh, as I said in, um, before in POP, it should be running and it should be uh, running on more than a single node. Here you then have these limitations. You can apply for this, uh, even if your application doesn't run. And uh, here the uh, specialists can uh, help you to analyze. Here what they can help you to do a performance analysis, uh, code en uh, enabling and scaling, benchmarking, refactoring, code optimization. For example, you would like to uh, port your application from uh, CPUs to GPUs. It might be uh, the case where you can uh, uh, apply. I would like to do a performance analysis on debugging, or you're stuck. And the beauty of this project is also you'll get uh, compute time for free. You apply, you'll get compute time and plus uh, analysis for free. Okay. Uh, any questions regarding this? So I, uh, then I stop my advertisement. Go, let's go back to the website. Uh, now you should click on hands-on. Here. And uh, uh, basically, we're supposed to uh, uh, do it on your own, but at the moment, like we uh, don't have one minus one hour. I will try to do a demo. You'll try to reproduce. Uh, if not, you can do it later. So basically, uh, there are uh, uh, six steps here. First, we do a basement uh, instrumentation. We run our application without any tools to measure the time how it runs without uh, any tools. Uh, then we apply score P and uh, identify that it runs very slow. Uh, next step, we'll identify why it runs so slow. Uh, then we'll try uh, to filter out what is not necessary and uh, explore profile with a cube. And then uh, do a, a Scalesco trace analysis and visualize it with Vampire. Okay, basically uh, I will try to demo, you'll try to uh, join me and uh, repeat what I'm doing. So, but basically everything what is described, you just follow the instructions. Any questions? Uh, first, I'll go. Uh, I'm already on bridges. Uh, you should be already on bridges. Uh, then, uh, basically, we create a directory. Uh, we will have all our measurements. Uh, in our case, uh, we will use uh, GCC and OpenMPI. I will load it. Okay, uh, then basically I'll go to this directory uh, and untar this particular file where uh, the benchmark is prepared.
So this, uh, uh, let, let me, uh, there are a couple of words about this particular applications. Uh, this is NPB benchmarks. It solves discretized version of unsteady compressed Navier-Stokes equations in three spatial dimensions. There are multiple benchmarks. In our case, we'll use uh, a block three diagonal benchmark. So basically, uh, did you uh, already on bridges and on tar? Did you uh, enable to get the tar ball and untar it? Then uh, we'll try to make it. Uh, it types you instructions what you need to do uh, to build it. Uh, uh, basically, you need to provide, uh, this is a fixed problem. Uh, you need to provide how many MPIs you would use for your application and the problem size. Uh, and in our case, we will use uh, uh, BTMZ uh, benchmarks. There are multiple benchmarks. We'll use BTMZ. Uh, it's a block triagonal. Uh, and this application uses MPI plus OpenMP. So basically, uh, domain divides uh, into big chunks and works on big chunks with MPI, and within the chunk, it uses OpenMP. It's a very old Fortran code, uh, but doesn't matter for us. So it's basically, uh, it, uh, SCORE-P should also work with uh, C, uh, C++, and Fortran. Uh, we have chosen uh, this application because uh, it gives a, a nice results uh, and it also provides, like, depicts uh, how uh, over big overhead can be, uh, how we can apply uh, filtering, uh, and it also has a very nice um, structure of the code. That's why it was chosen. Not because we are uh, Fortran fans. Some of us, yes. So now you have to compile it. Maybe you already did it while I was talking. Uh, now I can run it. Uh, I already have my executable in uh, bin directory. Then I, uh, uh, you should copy the uh, job script. I prepared job script for you. Uh, I, I already copied it, but I can copy it again. And then let's examine it. Okay, let, we can examine it here. So basically, uh, job script should look like this. Um, in our case, uh, we are using two nodes, uh, eight MPI ranks, uh, and each of the MPI ranks will use four uh, uh, OpenMP threads in this case. Then we load uh, uh, necessary uh, software, uh, GCC and OpenMPI, mm, and then we basically set the variables we need uh, to uh, use the uh, 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 MPI run command, like we, we use a certain amount of tasks and a certain amount of um, open MP threads. So uh, here, uh, this is uh, like, don't forget this option, like don't remove it, uh, because otherwise uh, uh, open MP threads won't be spawned. It's, uh, it is related to bridges. Uh, usually it's not the case when you have to use this option, but in, in this case, you really have to, uh, to use this uh, function, uh, to, to use this option. And we have a reservation now, so don't forget to use it. Uh, if you uh, want to reproduce this later, remove this uh, option. Did you already submit? Okay, is it running? Okay, good, great. As patch. Okay, is it running for you? Already somebody got uh, some results? Okay, good. Uh, who got the results? Uh, one? Okay, okay, good. So we are 
We are good. Um, so basically, I'll scroll down because mine is still in the queue. We have only 10 nodes uh, available for all of us. Uh, please examine the results if you have already. So I already prepared it, but you can also scroll uh, into the document how the results should look like uh, for your particular output. Uh, it provides you uh, uh, information how uh, many uh, active processes we, we use. Uh, in our case, it's eight, eight MPI rings. Uh, and six threads per process. Then uh, uh, let's scroll down, and uh, this is uh, um, like uh, important information for us that we'll use uh, we used uh, uh, class C, uh, total process is number eight, uh, and the time in seconds. Time in seconds is important. For 14 seconds. Our application runs for 14 seconds, and uh, another piece uh, is, which is important is verification is successful. It means uh, our application was uh, um, delivered correct results. Please check your uh, execution if it's similar, if it's slow, if it's faster, if it's successful, unsuccessful. Successful all. What is the runtime? Not not successful. Um, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, uh, here there is an info. Uh, um, uh, do you know time utility from Linux? It might be really handy for uh, short benchmarking. Like you can always uh, benchmark something very fast with the time utility. It provides you uh, three values, user time, system time, and real time. And uh, real time, uh, I usually uh, refer to real time where it's like wall clock time. It provides uh, how long your application it runs. You, you can also, let, let's say, test it with test uh, uh, time, time, sleep, one second. Uh, and then it provides you three values. Uh, real time is uh, what you are usually interested in. Uh, this is a wall clock time. Are you more or less with me? There is no more issues so far I see one person. But let's go to instrumentation, next part. Now we would like apply score P measurements to what we just measured, uh, like uh, with this application, but now we would like to enable score P. For this we need uh, score P. Uh, score P is available, uh, uh, I install it. Locally, it's not uh, available uh, uh, for everyone. Like you cannot do modular avail score P, uh, but if you do this modular use, uh, it should be available. Then, uh, modular load uh, score P Skalaska, uh, and as you can see, this is also a score P and Skalaska dependent on the compiler and uh, MPI version. If you use something else, you have to uh, use different version of score P and Skalaska. Done. Uh, then I go to my home directory uh, because I have to recompile again uh, with Score P enabled. For this, uh, I need to do a make clean and modify this particular file. This is called config makedev and the changes are marked uh, on the website with, uh, with uh, dark lines. Check them. So basically uh, what you need to change is the light 40 and put uh, uh, uncommented. Like it, is, it should be commented in your case. You, you, you should remove a hash here at the beginning. Right? Are you still with me? So basically in this uh, make config, there are all the parameters which, which are set, all the compiler flags, uh, which might be uh, enabled uh, for your particular comp uh, 
uh, compilation. It's it and it is dependent on uh, uh, um, compiler. If it's GCC, it's another one options. If it's uh, 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 Intel, it's another options. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Most of the uh, famous compilers are uh, supported. AMD, um, GCC, Intel, Cray. Uh, are you thinking about something particular? Yes, they're also supported. Like, um, yes, they are supported. Uh, it's not installed because I was not sure what what is necessary to use, but it's supported. Yes, and you can also collect uh, GPUs uh, uh, information. We don't uh, cover it here. There is a uh, uh, slide on the slide deck. There is like reference material how you can enable for CUDA, for example. If you are interested, you can check it. Yes. Yes, it should, it's it's supported. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. But like it needs to be installed, like uh, Score P with particular options. Like it has to be configured with. At the moment, it's with the GCC, but you have to uh, compile with uh, with you. For with Fortran, uh, like if you are using uh, very fresh Fortran, uh, it might be not supported. Uh, but for old Fortran, it should work fine. Uh, there is a branch for this, like it's a, a sp special version. There is a branch. If you are interested, you can talk, contact us because it's not released. It's not in release. Like, uh, but there is, uh, we have a person who is working on, the, on this particular uh, feature. So, uh, and then we have to um, re uh, re recompile again. Once we did these changes. So basically, uh, uh, you should see. Um, oops, I, I didn't. Uh, you should see uh, like score p uh, um, dash dash user uh, before your compiler. Dash dash user means that we will also enable user instrumentation. We don't use it in, in this case, but uh, it doesn't b bother to keep it here. Uh, it will uh, after instrumentation. Instrumentation is actually will uh, this score p option before like prefix will uh, enable some additional parameters uh, to your compiler. So you don't see it, but it's actually what it does. It sets a particular flux uh, to the compiler. It's also MPI ACC what it does. It's, it just sets a particular flex. Uh, then we have to go to this pa particular directory. It's uh, Executable is now in a different directory. It's in a CD bin uh, scorp. Let's, let's do it. Let's go there. Are you still following me? Uh, basically, then I don't need to demo. I just go uh, uh, through the uh, website, and then uh, if you have some issues, you you just tell me. Because I see you you uh, you can follow me. <laughs> um, then uh, uh, you copy this uh, batch script to use directory. If you have executable in uh, your cd bin dot p, it means everything was successful. Uh, please copy batch script inside. Uh, let's examine this batch script. What is uh, what is the different? So we basically just uh, use module use to enable uh, uh, score p uh, to be available within the modules. Uh, then uh, we set a particular uh, variable. This variable sets the name of the measurement where our measurements will be stored. The uh, score P can be controlled uh, via uh, these variables. There are hundreds of variables. Uh, this particular one uh, will set uh, <coughs> uh, the name of the directory. The rest keeps the same. So we don't do to, to change anything. Uh, 
Uh, if you don't set these variables, the uh, measurement still will be created, uh, but uh, measurement directory will be not so uh, uh, human readable. It would be date and some random numbers. All the variables which are available for score p can be queued uh, with this command. This score p that minus info config verse dash dash full. So you can see all spectrum of variables and what they do. Like, let me execute them. Yeah, you can see uh, variables to enable tracing. Uh, uh, to set verbose output, to uh, set a total memory, and so on, like a lot of information. 